that ding dong. Hi, come on in. Hi. I'm what, Betty. Hi, Betty. I'm Greg Newman. Thank you, Greg. Hey, Greg, Bill. Hi, Bill. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, too. Terrific. I've been looking forward to this opportunity. I, I assume you had a chance to go through my package at all when it was we delivered? Did? Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Before we even do that, why don't you take me on a tour of the house? So let's get a little chance. You walk around because nobody knows a house better than you do, and I'd like to see the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, the purpose of going through the house with them is one, obviously, I have to know what the house is I'm selling, and two, I look for things that I can relate to. Okay? And I see you have a lot of soccer trophies here. So, one of your kids play soccer? Yes, uh, both of our kids play soccer. They've been in all lots of tournaments, and we go every Saturday to soccer tournaments. Excellent. My sister's a soccer coach. I haven't mm -hmm. spoken to her in 40 years, but I have a. <laughs> but she doesn't. But see, I'm looking for something that we can relate to. Something that you know, you can always say something about something that they have. I'm looking when I go into master bedroom to see how his t his shirts are probably all a half an inch apart, all lined up by color, so I know what his personality type is, because those are important, because if he's a C personality, and everybody knows the DISC system, if he's a C personality, he's gonna be my hardest clothes, because he wants facts and details and things like that. The S's are a lot easier because of the fact that I can talk about the kids and the things like that, and how wonderful it's gonna be to have a great new family come into their house, and we can start over again. So we've toured the house, I love the finishes, it's terrific. Why don't we have a seat, and I'd like to kind of go over this package with you, if you would. Now, sure. I'm gonna stand a little bit just so you guys are, now I know, uh, what was that Prudential? I know Berkshire Hathaway has a couple of folders that they, they use of their own. Uh, we have made our own, uh, it's just a binder, it's just a custom printed binder. Uh, it has the downtown, look. it has the downtown skyline on it. Uh, it just has Newman and Newman so that I can send anybody with it. I used to work with my ex-wife for, well, she's been my ex-wife 26 years. Debbie and I worked together for 33 years. Uh, she's now on a sabbatical, but at that point, you know, so I took the faces off, uh, which I think a lot of guys should and gals should do, uh, not necessarily because of how you look, but you quit using your high school picture. Uh, <laughs> I keep showing up and saying, no, I'm here to meet your daughter. Uh, so... But we have this, so this is a high-end binder. It, they, the total binder and the things inside cost me about $20 a book. So I bought 500 of them, they'll last me two years. Uh, it's a pretty inexpensive thing when you think about that. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but I'll tell you, when I take this, peop people are always just aghast at how cool it is. They take it away, but I say, wow, that, and I said, I'll leave that here for you to look at. Uh, I know they have a high-end one here that they want you to take home with you. I just, by the way, if you think about our commissions, particularly in our area, I mean, what's the average price in Orange County? What, 800000 700000 You know, so, I mean, if you're going to be making a $28,000 commission or a little more, if you're depending upon what you charge, spend this money. One sale will bring all this stuff back. So inside, what was, what's inside for them first is a letter. It's an introductory letter. And I put this together last night, which is why I put it to Mr. and Mrs. Jamie Maxwell and I put Dear Greg on it, because I forgot to change the Greg part. Uh, but this is a letter, and it just tells them, it tells a little about our successes. And it's really positive in the fact that it says, we're not telling you this to brag, we're just telling you that we have the capability to go on. So that's something for them to look at. Then inside, the very first thing inside is my CMA. And usually I pull the CMA out and I set it aside. And I said, we'll talk about this in a little bit. First, I want to talk to you about my marketing. The CMA breaks down. It's just like you all do. It has the tip sheet in the front. And you don't have to take notes because this will all be available. Then it has the properties for sale, your competition. If the property had previously been listed or had been previously on the market, I would have that MLS supplement or uh, document next so that I would be able, when I talk to them, I'd be able to go over it. Then the next thing is, is the properties for sale, which is your competition. And it's important to them, and I like to read this because it tells them this is the asking price only. The asking price is not the sold price, and therefore asking price in and of themselves are not reliable indicators of market value. Uh, because as you all know, a lot of people say, well, the house down the street's listed for seven fifty. Well, what it hasn't sold, it's been on for three years. Uh, you know, it may be overpriced, or we don't actually call them overpriced. We 
they, it may need repositioned in the marketplace. Uh, we all, we, I never ask for price change. I just tell them the market has spoken. I think it's very important that we try to reposition your property in the marketplace. Will that work for you? And the other thing I do is I like that. Will that work for you? I always try to end with a question because my whole goal in the presentation is to get them to do what I call the chicken. It's when they start nodding their head. Because if they're nodding their head, they know you're fo they're following what you're doing and what you're saying, and that's important, and they're agreeing with it. So you're, no com you're communicating. If they're not, and they're still sitting, you have to change the way that their arms are crossed, their legs are crossed, you have to change how you're going to do that. Then in there, I have the, the, the comps. I start out with the ones that are active. I have the CMA. Now, if the CMA, I put the CMA in together differently, depending upon the market. If the market is rising, I put a regular CMA just like you do that lists all the actives going from low to high. If it's a slow market, I reverse that CMA and I put the highest ones on the bottom or on the top and go up the other way. So in other words, I can say, as you can see, properties have sold for 700,000, 675, 650, six and a quarter, 575, so I'm deflating their expectations rather than going the other way when you go from 550 to 750 by the time you're done they're sure it's at least 750 so I tell me you can see that they've sold for as high as and they typically will go as low as so it's a really simple trick to turn that inside out or to reverse that when you're in a declining market hopefully you will be in the business long enough to be in a declining market I've been in since 1981 the day I got my license was the day the VA rate went to 17 and a half percent the highest it was terrific I was too new and too dumb to know you couldn't sell in that market all the top agents were sitting around bemoaning of the things and I thought wow this is cool you know they came out with some great programs so it was really interesting and you know 5,300 sales later and $2 billion, I'm up here. So it's a wonderful business. There's a lot of money to be made. Okay, so I take that aside and I'll say, now what I really like to share with you is my marketing package. The first thing I have is, uh, is I have permanent tabs in between. This one says serving all of San Diego since 1981. My book has downtown because I try to focus on downtown. At my age, I hate to drive all over the county, but I will if the price is right. If not, I'll send somebody else. But typically, I do, so that serves all of San Diego County, and then every one of the tabs will have a different picture of something in the, the part of, of the county that I may work or may not. So, you know, you might want to have Disneyland, you might want to have something that, that reflects Orange County, so that if you do get an opportunity to take a high-end house in Anaheim Hills or something like that, off you go. Then behind that, I have my marketing program which is starts right here and I start out right off the bat this is what I would pull out first and I want to share this with you both this is my marketing program and I've designed this exclusively for you so on here in the first page is what I think is probably the single biggest thing that makes sales and listings for me easy it's our service guarantee when you list your home with Newman & Newman, we guarantee you the option to cancel the listing at any time if you're unhappy with our service for, or for any reason. We can make this guarantee because we have the confidence that like over 5,300 satisfied buyers and sellers have found, you're going to be thrilled with our integrity, professionalism, the aggressive marketing we are committed to undertake in order to get your property sold. That immediately, because one of the biggest fears is they're going to get tied up with this buyer or an agent who's not going to do the job. And now you're a six-month contract or nine-month contract. I don't have a problem. If I'm not doing a the job, they should fire me. I would say I probably have this maybe five times a year somebody will exercise this. And the main reason that they do it is because they've been carrying their condominium vacant or their house vacant and they can't afford to make the payments and they want to re-rent it or put a tenant in. And I almost always get that listing back at a future time. But this takes away all the conflicts about how long are you going to want, how long the listings are going to be? I mean, I automatically put nine months and everything. I said, one day. Or if I get back to the office and you've canceled, you can cancel. It's not an issue. This is so, I mean, it just takes it all away. And I know that for everybody I spend money on, 99% or 90% of them even are never going to, it's not going to hurt you. It's easy to do. Then the next thing I do is then I talk about, okay, this is our marketing plan. Here's our mark, personal pledge to you. And I have boxes that I check. 
So, one of the first things that I'll do with you, and, and this breaks down into packages that are in the book in the other uh, section. So, you'll be featured in our downtown news property. That's a little rag sheet that's downtown San Diego. Uh, I think newspaper advertising is a waste of money. Uh, if you look at even Berkshire Hathaway's little thing, it shows less than 1% of homes are sold through newspaper ads, so I almost never advertise, but there's a little rag sheet downtown, costs $1,200 a month. I take the full back page just to keep any other company from getting it. Sotheby's has been trying to get it for a long time, and you know, for $1,200, I'll keep them out of it. So you'll be featured in there. One of the other things that we do is that we, it's very important to us is that we will use professional photography. You have seen some of these listings, and usually I have listings in here at that point that I can show them where you can obviously, while we're going through the book, I'll say here's an example, and I'll have a tag of a listing that you know the guy took it with his cell phone, or maybe it was a brownie, because they are <laughs> terrible shots. The people are laughing and showing their age. Uh, <laughs> they're terrible shots. I mean, they're dark, they're gloomy. You know, what I try to tell my clients is the most important thing today is that what we, our photographs and what we put on the internet, that's your open house today. Because that's truly, I mean, very few in downtown, very few of our condominiums permit open houses. But the main thing is, is that's where we're going to expose. And if you've got one crappy picture, how is anybody ever going to want? They're going to click right past it and you're gone. So we always do professional broker, uh, photography. We do hosted broker open house tours. I think they're very important. We want the agents to get through to see it. So we'll do that. We'll put it in a multiple listing service with a full feature supplement. And here's a, here's a good example. Uh, let's see, here's one right here. Uh, this is an agent that's got a house that's for sale. And they're asking uh, two and a half million dollars. And in the supplement, they haven't said a word. And this supplement is free. If I can't find 1,400 characters to say something about your house, that's crazy. And, and the other thing is, look at these pictures. The pictures aren't bad, but they don't even, you can log and say what the rooms are. They don't even show the rooms. They don't, I know yeah, this, yeah. I'm amazed that these ladies sell as much as they do, mm -hmm. because they do it so ineptly. Yeah. Uh, but it is important that you have that. And I'll give you a little example, is, and I always, I don't have any problem just saying that. Uh, I think, you know, you have competition. They're not telling them, the seller, how wonderful you are. Uh, so, I and look, this is misspelled. Now, this is an example of one of our listings. You can see we have the nice remarks. Mm -hmm. Here's the photographs. Look at all the detailed description. Because when you look at four or five rooms, do you know if it's a bedroom? Do you, I mean, no. do you know if it's a, when they're vacant, you can't tell what they are. Right. I think that's critical. I think that we talk about it, we tell them where it is, the dining room features, the tropical style from the terrace, you'll enjoy the views. So we try to push that. So all those pictures, all that professional photography has that nice, and then there's write-ups and supplements that talk about the features of the building. I think that's very important. I always point out in the listing presentation, two or three listings that are in there that show terrible photographs, no details, so they can see the difference in what they get from us versus what they get from other people. You should expect this. Your home is nice enough. You need to demand this because this is going to be on the internet. Now, one of the things I will do is you'll be featured on our top-rated sellsandiego.com website. I've had this website since 1988. It draws a lot of things. There's a lot of, most of our marketing today is done on the internet. One of the other things that I do is I'm, a, Realtor.com, but we do it with a custom banner and up to 25 pictures because we pay $3,800. Well, now Berkshire Hathaway pays that for every one of you. They pay that money so that you can have the photographs because for many years they didn't pay that. I had to pay it myself, and I was always pointing out I would bring a copy of one of the ones on Realtor.com and say, look, this is the only photograph on here. One picture. And if you have one picture, what do you show? You show the building. Do you show a bedroom? Do you show the view? So that's why, I, and I tell them, that's the difference. And that's important. A lot of the things you do, you assume that sellers are aware that you do it, and they're not. So that'll be, so that way when somebody looks on, and it's interesting, if you look in here, I'll, I have a little package here. Well, we'll go into that later, my marketing. You'll also be on Berkshire Hathaway's California Homes website. You'll be on World Properties. 
You'll be on Sign on San Diego. That's the Union Tribune satellite. You'll be on Trulia. You'll be on Yahoo. You'll be on Zillow. You'll be on Craigslist. You'll be on all the websites everybody else puts you on. But one of the differences is, is that in addition to that, you'll be listed on 400 websites that Berkshire Hathaway has. And there's a sheet in here when we get in the online marketing that I'll show you what those are. In addition to that, I have over 100 websites of my own for downtown San Diego. I have one for HarborClubSD.com, ElectraSD.com, PinnacleSD.com. So everybody who looks for any listing downtown that goes on any one of those 100 websites, your property will be featured in here. And those are important things. Your property certainly deserves a, a virtual tour. And I think that's a critical thing. I mean, that's the only way I'm going to be able to capture all the things. My office is in a storefront. It's in the Gas Lamp District, as you know. Uh, it's the most visited place in San Diego County, and we have what we call the talking window, which we have exclusive rights to, where people can come by and they can press buttons and it tells them about the house. We don't have a lot of walk-ins from that, but we have an awful lot of what I call drag-ins, because I make the agents that work for me sit behind that window when somebody comes out, they walk out and say, hi, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Chicago. Oh, God, I am so sorry that it's only 80 today here. Uh, what is it in Chicago? Is it snowing today? And would you like to have a little place? Wouldn't it be nice to have a little pet terre So that's how we sell your property is by exposing it both online, both to walk-in traffic with that office location. We have an office caravan that's very important, I think, with my buyer's division because they'll be the ones that will be taking the Internet calls and the calls. So that when I'm here with you, I have buyer's agents because I think the buyer's agents are a critical part that while I'm here with you, your property's not off the market. You take these agents that work by themselves, it's pretty difficult to be everything. I mean, they're trying to be the cook, the, the chef, the bottle washer, the, the server. I have people that do that so that when I'm here with you, if the phone rings and somebody wants to see your property, there's somebody available to show it. And I think that's critical because that way your home is always on the market. And I use that, frankly, against single agents. And I think any agent who's a single agent shouldn't be a single agent. They should at least they should have a team and a team should be comprised of, if it has to be, your escrow officer, your, your title officer, your mortgage lender, your office manager, uh, the marketing director. I mean, you just heard that little story he told earlier. You should have a team, t a photo taken with that team. And that's what you should become is that team. It's very important because in today's market, I think teams do probably like 90% of the business. It's an astounding number that the big teams do. And without that ability, even if it's just other people, at least people perceive that you have other people working for you. Okay, I have a free courier service. I have a courier so that any time he, he or she can come over so that I don't want you to have to take off work to meet a termite person. I don't want you to have to meet an inspector. I, and I, you know, even if it needs something needs to be done, we'll take care of that, that courier service. We are, that's a young lady who brought you the package. You'll be featured on HomeFeedback.com. This is a very important feedback system that we use. We pay extra for it. And what it does is every time your home is shown, we send out a questionnaire which features pictures of your property. It features detailed information, and it asks them what the buyers thought of the price, of the terms, of the condition. Is there any, are they thinking about making offers, anything we do? I get that back, but what's even better is you get that directly yourself. So you hear what they're saying, unvarnished. If I forget to tell you to put a plug in because your carpet smells like old dog, then they tell that you're hearing it from them. So I think it's critical that you get that information because 75% of sellers typically say, he listed my property, I never heard from him again. You want to know what that feedback is. So if we get 15 or 20 showings and we haven't had a sale, we can look at everybody said it's overpriced, we can adjust accordingly to the market. Uh, you also, well, you get follow up and feedback, so we give you a copy of our listing. We think it's critical, nobody knows this house better than you do. So I think it's critical that I will send you the listing, I will send you a copy of the supplement, I will send you a copy of the photograph, so you can tell me if I forgot to mention the, this, the stuff that you have in, in the kitchen, you know, that nice backsplash that you have with the glass tile. You can tell me about all those features and, you know, I want to be sure to remember those custom closets. So those are things that I want you to do because this is a thing that you and I are going to be involved in together. Nobody knows this house better than the two of you. And nobody has ever bought it for a better reason than you have, I'm sure. And by the way, if you could tell me in three words or four words, how would you, 
how would you say, well, how would you describe your house? Well, I mean, there's no doubt mine, our house is, when you agree, it's the nicest house on the block. Yeah. I mean, there's not one there's that's going to compare to it. Yeah. Three or so. four words. <laughs> it's hard I to want, say three I, words for our house. It's just right, well, that let's, great. Let's say four. Let's give four words. Give me four words that would describe your house. Nicest home on the block. I'll give you That's five. <laughs> Excellent. You know what I would do? My brochure would say, nicest home on the block. That would be the headline. Because well, I know right off the bat, he's going to like it. So if they tell you, you know, spacious king and whatever it is, use that. So, nicest home on the block. I can get that in there. I might even say the, and we'll throw in that in. So, that's important. So, I always ask them, describe to me your home in three or four words. Just give me three or four words to work from. Uh, you also get marketing. So, you're going to get feedback. You get copies of all the advertisements. You'll have the ability to review all that. You also get the Newman & Newman binder, which comes to you, and inside that we also have all your paperwork will come, all your documents will come, everything will be three-hole punch so that you can keep one binder to have everything in. Uh, we did talk about, uh, you know, it has sections for showing feedback, explanations of the things, what people say. Uh, you're going to get high-quality high brochures, as we talked about. These are going to be on the property, and I'll show you some of those as we go forward. You'll be featured in the Newman & Newman Downtown Market Date. That goes to 10,000 home buyers every month. So every month, 10,000 people will get your information. <laughs> if they'll authorize it, we'll have open houses. And obviously, <coughs> your property should be featured in the Dream Homes Magazine website. I mean, there's no question about it. So what I've done is ordinarily I wouldn't go this fast because I would break some of these things down. When we first talk about ourselves, I would share a little information. Let's give you a little information. So just to give you an idea of who we are, this shows that in production last year, so that's dollars amount, Debbie and I were third in the county. Uh, of course, we're competing with the guys from La Jolla, La Jolla, La Jolla, La Jolla, Coronado Rancho, Santa Fe, La Jolla, La Jolla. So you know we have to sell a lot of homes to compete with those high-end clients. In addition to that, uh, we were rated, I guess I didn't pull that one, we were rated number one in, oh, there it is, we were number one in transactions for all of San Diego County. So we know that our marketing plan works. We know that what this does will bring you the most potential to sell. Here's a couple things. Since you are working downtown, I just thought I'd bring you these two little documents. This is a little sheet that I print in that newspaper. It's called, the, it's the congratulations to the efforts of the top 100 agents downtown. And we list those agents in order so that you can see exactly what kind of production they're doing. As you can see, we've done a hunt, we did 103 last year downtown. The next closest competitor did 37, uh, then the 13. And see, after, after we get beyond that, you get down to 13, they drop off pretty dramatically. Mm -hmm. When I print this, I am the most hated man in San Diego <laughs> because nobody wants their name down there. Worse not to be on it, but even worse to be down there with the 47 that are tied for three <laughs> or the last... Uh, from 57 on that have done four and particularly the sellers I watch the sellers and they'll run their finger down there and they're looking for the name of the other agent they're interviewing <laughs> and when they get there I see them look at each other <laughs> uh oh so if you have that now you may not have that credibility or that kind of strength but I would certainly before I ever went on a listing appointment I would have everything that the company did on that sheet so the company is what you're now selling. Because for those of you who don't have the, the, the credibility that I have, haven't been around for so damn long, you have this ability. And I would really think that that's a good one. Now, and of course, one of the things that we've really done is that we've partnered with Berkshire Hathaway. It was interesting. We, we considered many different firms when we were deciding who we were going to go, particularly when the change was, was being done. And we felt that Berkshire Hathaway, with their reputation, and with Smith, Mr. Buffett, I mean, what I like is the Berkshire Hathaway high-end sellers like you recognize that name immediately. When I sell a lower end, they may not recognize Berkshire Hathaway, but they certainly recognize Warren Buffett. And it astounds me how well he's liked. I mean, even people that, that you know, are living on paycheck to paycheck think a lot of that man. So he has a great deal of credibility, really works for us, and a lot of people going. And of course, this, this talks about, you know, we have 47,000 sales professional and 1,400 office. We did 100 billions in sales. So Berkshire Hathaway has that strength. Now, obviously, all this will be left for you. This is just a little magazine that we were talking about. Remember when I told you about the, uh, 
our talking window. This is our office, although now it has a purple awning on it. Uh, or excuse me, a Cabernet awning uh, <laughs> with cream lettering. And, but this is the talking window, and your home is featured in there. Mm -hmm. And this works very, very well because the people stop by. You've been on tours. I mean, you've been on, on vacation. And when you see, you always stop and look at the offices to see what they have in the window. So we think that's important. The other thing is this is just a little brochure. It talks about Debbie and I and what we've done over the years. Uh, you can see this. Actually, I always laugh about this one because you know, Debbie and I are divorced. A lot of people are unaware we've been divorced for 26 years. Uh, to keep my present wife happy, I always try to keep a little space between us. And one time we were too close, so they cut my arm off, pasted it back on, and so it's a little shorter than it used to be. <laughs> little anecdotes like that make sellers enjoy it, makes you human, it makes you understand. But the other thing is, do you notice the quality of everything? Everything is high quality, high gloss, it's all good finishes. That's a little bit about us, and I don't want to put you to sleep, so let me cover a couple other things real in a, mind, in a quick, quick manner, and I'll get some of this out of the way so that you'll have some feeling of, of what we're doing here. Mainly because your biggest thing is going to be marketing. Are, you, are we marketing it properly? So I have two sections in here that I'd like to share with you. Uh, the next section is the marketing, and this one has a picture of Mount Woodson Golf Course. That's in East San Diego. Uh, it's our, our marketing program, print marketing and online marketing. Okay, well let's talk about print marketing first. You had heard me say earlier that I don't believe in a newspaper, which I don't, uh, but occasionally we put an ad in just mainly to prove to sellers that it doesn't work. But what I want to share with you <laughs> is a couple of things. As you, you've been getting my postcards, so this shows that we've listed in the Harbor Club, we've done another one. So we send out these when they're just listed, just sold all the time, these postcards go out. They go out over and over and over again. You obviously, you get my monthly market update. This is what you called me on. So I make one of these for every building downtown. I would do the same thing if I worked a little farm. Uh, if I worked a community, I would, these, we call these macro sites. Uh, I, would, I would set up a little macro site that, you know, so you can send out a little update. This has a picture of the building on the front. Inside, I have the just listed, the just solds, and the pendings. I don't know if you can put pendings in, we can. Uh, you, can't, you can't advertise the, the street address, but you can advertise the street. In our MLS, you can't advertise like the unit number if you're in a high rise, but you can advertise the 34th floor. So in here, I have that. Then I have Newman and Newman's featured properties. So obviously, if this were going to the Harbor Club, I would make sure that I had three or four of the Harbor Club or similar buildings to it. Because by the way, that's where they live. They live in the Harbor Club. Uh, and then over here I have my active listings. This is where I talked about when I told them that they would be featured in a mailer that goes to 10,000. Well, they're, they're either going to be in here or they're going to be in one of the active listings. Then I have the pending listings and the closed sales. And then on the back, this time, well, next, next month's issue is talking about the market, how our market is down 16% from last year, prices are up, market's down, and inventory's up almost 40% down in San Diego. So, I mean, all this stuff we hear in the newspaper about low inventory, our guys that are, are out of date. This just talks about the sales for the results are in for the first 12 months. It shows who had the most sales, uh, who had the, the, the most dollar amount, who had the, the most number of listings, and who had the most buyers represented. This was for the first two months. Uh, obviously, if you're not there, then do your company, because I imagine this company probably dominates this marketplace. Uh, so that goes in there. Uh, these are just some of the samples of the brochures that I think are, are critical to have in your property. I would think something like this, the stunning remodel that we prepare. Uh, you guys just saw a great one. You probably can get them as cheap as I can. I think mine probably cost me more than $5.95. But what I do if the house is over a million dollars, I send out 1,700 of these. I mail them to everybody who has a, compl everybody who has a unit that has over 1,500 square feet in it which is a bigger unit in San Diego. Uh, so that will be mailed out to all, the, all those people. Uh, in addition, just to let you know, this gives you a little idea. In July 12th to June 13th, uh, we were the luxury real estate leader in downtown sales over 1.85. And you can see these are all ones that we sold. And these are some of our featured listings. And you obviously will be in the next one of those that goes out. And this also goes out to my high-end mailing list. Uh, and then this gives you a 12, this is another one, this gives you a 12 month summary of resale agents with over 1.85 in downtown San Diego. We had, we had five, the next one had three, two, and then all these people that split the listings. 
So it looks like there's only two choices. There's us and, and Francine Finn from Sotheby's. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for the high end also, you know, we, we always add a lot of this Berkshire stuff. They have the Neat, uh, Elite Alliance program that they talk about. Uh, they talk about Proxio. They talk about the La Jolla Dream Homes. Uh, again, this is the Dream Homes of where they're going to be located, so your property would be in all those. So uh, it's, it's a little tough to do all this. Now, ordinarily, we'd be, we're almost there. We'll do the, the online marketing, then we'll, st we'll start talking about price. Okay. You know, Greg, you're doing, you do a lot of stuff here. It seems like you might be too busy for our listing. Well, a lot of people think that way. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I suppose it would be, it's tough to think that you're going to, your home probably has more ability to be exposed to somebody who has more listings and more buyers coming than to be the only listing one agent has. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that agent will be focused. The thing I would be most concerned about with an agent that only has one listing mm -hmm. or very few listings is how do they support themselves? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be in a position where they're going to have to make a decision whether to make their car payment or, or advertise your house? Mm -hmm. I don't think you want to be in that situation. Yeah. I think it's better that you have a better chance to have your home exposed to somebody who has lots of advertising, lots of internet presence. Get these people come in. Now, mm -hmm. I agree. I'm not the person that's going to come and take the photographs. I'm going to have that professionally scheduled and done by a professional photographer. I'm not the person that's going to write the copy because I'm going to have a professional editor write the copy. But I am the person who's going to be the negotiator, who's going to talk to the buyer's agents who indicate it uh, on in interest. I am going to be the person on the front line that you can rely on. But as far as doing the mundane day-to-day -day things, I, I don't think that's the best use, highest and best use of my time. You'd mm -hmm. rather have me out there actively seeking mm -hmm. for a buyer for your mm -hmm. property. Well, I just want to know if we have any issues or we yeah. need to talk to you. Do we talk to you? Okay. The question was, if we had any, any <coughs> issues, do we talk to you? You always talk to me. Okay. Now. Obviously, I don't want you to call me if you need a brochure, mm -hmm. if you're out of brochures right. or getting out. You let me mm -hmm. know before that. Mm -hmm. You would talk to Caroline with that. Caroline, you're going to love Caroline. She's an Irish gal. She's got a heavy brogue. She'll be telling you, that, well, bring them by at half mm -hmm. 10. Half mm -hmm. 10 is 1030. Mm -hmm. So you have to be aware that when you talk to Caroline, mm -hmm. tell her to slow down. And mm -hmm. But we would take care of that. When you have a challenge with marketing, when you have a challenge in pricing, if you have a challenge on negotiations, that's my job. My job is to do two things, to oversee the listings and to handle the sales to make sure they close. That's the two things I do. All the rest of it is paperwork and should be hired by an efficient assistant. Mm -hmm. The team that I have, my escrow coordinator, Laura, has been with me for 16 years. My listing coordinator, Laura, has been with me for 15 years. Uh, they each have an assistant who's now been with me five years. Mm -hmm. My buyer's agent manager has been with me 17 years. And I think that my junior buyer's agent is probably, and there are six of them, I think my junior buyer's agent has been with me for four years. My senior one's been there 16, 17. So they, there's a reason that they all stay together. It's because we have systems, we work as a team, and we know that we can do the job. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. Let's go into online marketing very briefly. Just want to share, this is a nice little document about how buyers find their homes. And it talks about it shows 42% from the internet. This comes from Berkshire <laughs> Hathaway. 34% come from Realtor.com, or I mean from uh, real estate professionals. Frankly, guys, I would say 76% of these come from the internet because that's where you guys find the listings, is on Santa Core and the internet. So basically, you can see these two things. 76% of our sales are really coming from yard signs. Well, they don't work because we're in a condominium. Our friends or relatives, they're always good. That's why I always want you to make sure I leave extra brochures so that you can give them to friends or relatives in the neighborhood. Uh, builders, we're not competing with new homers. Uh, direct from seller, those are what we call for sale by owners. Uh, have you ever seen the movie uh, Pacific Heights where they rented the property out and yes. people took away? That's what I call for sale by owners. They're future Pacific Heights people. <laughs> and then we have newspaper print, which is 1%. So you can see, obviously, we don't really spend much money in it because I'm better focused to spend my marketing dollars in place of bringing the biggest return. These are some of those websites that I was telling you about, so you can see. Uh, there's 235 on Market SD, 300 on Market SD, there's Harvard Club SD, there's Horizons SD. So if they go on any one of these sites, they're going to find your property. These are the 400 <laughs> websites that Berkshire Hathaway has, and you can see they're Wall Street Journal, the Los Angeles Times, the uh, uh, some of these I've never heard of, Pacific Daily News. Uh, so, but these are Orange County Register, so the or Orange Leader. 
These are important sites because this exposes your property. The other thing that's important is you need to know, there's the Wall Street Journal, there's MSN, they're on Zillow, Front Door, Trulia, Berkshire. These are all sites that people look at, and it's very important. It's important that I make sure that your home is exposed to the biggest possible audience. A lot of times people ask me, what's the reason for your success? And I tell them it's marketing. And the real goal is if I, I look at every house as a cushion, and I say there's a butt for every cushion, and if I can bring enough butts through your door, one of them's going to say this is a cushion for me. And that's the critical part is that I advertise. <laughs> Debbie hated that one too. Uh, <laughs> but it works. They buy it. But it, it, did you see they both nodded their head though? It, it works. It's important because the more exposure I get, the more chance you have to buy it. It only takes one. And that's what we're looking for is the one who's going to like the best house in the neighborhood. And of course, we do the international, of course, with the world properties, United States, Canada, China, all the places where buyers are coming from. We talked earlier about the Realtor.com showcase. Oh, this is an interesting thing I meant to show you. This is about Realtor.com. This is a three-month period from December through March. And this shows that I had 493, my listings in the last three months had 493 total search results, of which 22,700 went into listing details. You can see mm -hmm. this is some remarkable results. This tells you just think about that. In three months, a quarter of a million people, or I mean a half a million people can see your home just from one website. That's mm -hmm. why I paid that different that money, that $3,800. That's critical. These are websites. This is just a little list, the same list twice. This is a list of referring websites. So you can see, and look, ironically, harborclubsd.com, brings in 8% of my showings. It had 5,351 5, showings. Went directly to that website. That's critical for you. Now, just so you know, the reason that this particular website it got so many hits is because I have a $9 million condominium in there and everybody who can't make their house payment wants to click on it and see what a $9 million condo looks like. But it's important that if you have these results, and I pay business staff to get these results, I'd love to get to Prudential to get them to sign up for this because this would be really cool if we could show where all our websites come from. The other thing that I get from Visistat, I'm trying, did I say Prudential? I meant Berkshire Hathaway. The other thing I'm trying to get Berkshire Hathaway to do is again with this Visistat, is this is a perfect example. This gives you an idea. This is one year just in San Diego or just in the United States. I had 1,222,131 unique visits on my websites. Hmm. This shows you with the states that they came from. California, 867. New York, 40,000. Arizona, 31. Texas, 26,000. San Diego, Oceanside, LA. This is, and I can print this for any country in the world. Hmm. So hmm. I can show you where the people are looking at the websites. And this is true. I mean, this is a remarkable tool that we should have that you, I mean, I pay for it right now. But I have this, and it tracks. It, it can track every every website the potential has. It can tell you exactly where the people are coming from. It does such things down to such details. I can tell you what the what the the URLs were that they came in on. What the what the the small dots were come on. So I think that's a critical hmm. thing. If they don't get it, I would suggest that you get it for yourself. And oh, where one do we of, get that from? Uh, it's called Visistat. V i s i s t a t. It's like visit at and visistat.com, they'll sell it to you, and they're tremendous. I bought that probably 10 years ago or something like it. One of the things mm -hmm. I did miss in the, in the fine homes division is I wanted to share with you, I'm a great believer in dream homes. I believe Berkshire Hathaway has its own new high-end publication uh, that they've been promoting. I just got the first flyer on it. But this is a perfect example, a meeting of the minds. Uh, $2.4 million, it's in the Harbor Club, mm -hmm. it's high-end. These, mm -hmm. these don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I've sold one property in 30 years in here, mm -hmm. uh, but the sellers love them. They can put them on their coffee table, so it's worth paying the money. The discount is usually pretty good. I think it's $1,100 with the discount that we have, and I would, I would buy the ad just to make the seller happy because uh, they, they like to see their name in print. So now that we've talked about the marketing and I spent all this time bragging and telling you about myself, I'm sure there's some questions that you have. Uh, we've already, we haven't talked about the price per square foot because that's one way to sell it. I don't think that's the accurate way. Uh, I think that's what we call the Zillow way. 
Zillow just says everything is one price per square foot, and if it's that, it doesn't say anything about the view. It doesn't talk about these upgrades. It doesn't talk about any of the things that you've had. Mm -hmm. So before we get into that, do you have a feeling for what you think your house is worth? Well, um, I do, but I want to hear what you have to say. Good. I like that. That's always a toughie. Now I know I got a tough guy. What about you? Well, I, I agree with Bill. We just wanted to hear, you're the expert, so we were waiting to see what you had to say. Okay. Line. Huh? What's that? The famous line. The famous <laughs> line. Yeah, you're, you're the expert. Yes, and that's good. It, it, is, it pleases me that you do recognize that that is my expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes I find that sellers are not happy with the number I give them, mm. but that's what you're, you're an expert. It's just like if you go to a doctor and he tells you you have something wrong with you, you're not happy with it, but he's the expert. And that's what I am as the expert, and I'm thrilled that you've given me this opportunity. So, I've looked at the five comps in here, and based on the five comps that match yours, you can see that they've sold between 2.4 million and 3.5. Mm -hmm. You've already told me yours is the high, finest on the street. Absolutely. Uh, the challenge I would have with that is that if I, if I say it's the finest on the street, that means it should bring the, po the most possible high price, or the highest price ever. One of the things that we're facing today is we are facing slightly a declining market in mm -hmm. San Diego, as you're aware. I mean, you've, you've seen that the inventory has grown. In the 92101 uh, in the past uh, year, there was 180. Now there's 260. So there's 40% more inventory that you're going to compete with. So the main way to compete with inventory is to offer price because we want you to have the best chance to sell. Most of the sellers that I meet are interested in listing their house to sell, not listing their house to sit. So we have to find that fine line between what it's going to be to let your house sit on the market and what it's going to be to sell. Now, I think based upon my comparables, and as I said, the low is 2.5, the high is 3.4. Now, if you look at the one at 3.4, you'll see that that house had seven, uh, 750 more square feet than your house does. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an important feature because mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot of house. You know, that's at least two or three more bedrooms, plus it had a three-car garage. So I would think based upon this at this point, I think we should probably start you out at 2.9. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I don't think you're going to sell there. I think there's going to be some motion. I heard that, mm, mm -hmm. which probably tells me that you think it should be listed higher. Well, yeah, I mean, we put a, a lot of work into this house. I mean, look at that fireplace. We just, I just put that in and, you know, and... Have you enjoyed it? You no, know, we have enjoyed it, that's yeah. the, And that's the best part, and I, that's the thing that always pleases me most is when I hear a seller he's enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Because frequently I get pools. People tell me, oh, I put $200,000 in, in flatscaping in a pool, and I'll be lucky to get you 50 cents on the dollar for it. Mm -hmm. It's really true. I mean, most of the things that we do, we do for ourselves. We do for our families to enjoy. I agree that that's a nice feature. I don't know what it costs you to put it in, but that beautiful fireplace is not going to bring an extra 400000 for your house. Even mm -hmm. you have to admit mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, you know, we were kind of, we, I mean, we, you know, we've lived here a while. We watched yeah. the comps. Um, you know, I, I was sure, and, we, we, and we've been talking to other agents, Greg, i got to tell you. Oh, I would expect and, I hope so. Yeah. So, and so what I'm kind of hearing, what, and just our think on it, is I think we're closer to the, you know, the 3-4 mark. <laughs> well, yeah. a lot of times I hear other agents say that. And, and usually mm -hmm. what I found is that the person, the agent who offers you the highest possible price is probably the least capable of delivering it. We have a term in the real estate business called buying the listing. Mm -hmm. And frequently agents will go in and they'll say any price they can take it to the lowest possible commission, and then spend the next six months, eight months, nine months grinding you down. What I tell sellers, if you're tr truly only going to go on price, and some sellers do, they, it doesn't matter what anybody tells them, they go on the price, I say fine, list it at that price, and have the agent write in the contract at the very first time they suggest that you should lower the price, that you have the right to cancel the listing immediately. And mm -hmm. I think that time that slows them up a little bit because mm -hmm. now they're not so sure when I'm going to put it on at 3.9 and grind you down to 2.9 two where I am, where I think you start so you have a better chance. Because one thing that happens, people, the two questions they ask when they come to the door, how much are they asking and how long have they been on the market? Mm -hmm. Well, they've been on the market for nine months. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they say is, what's wrong? Well, yeah. you and I know what's wrong. There's nothing wrong with your house. It was mm -hmm. just mispositioned in the market. 
And I don't want that to happen to you because the longer you sit on the market, the lower the price goes. And as you chase the market down, the market will actually get away from you. Because that house that we, we looked up at the street that's similar to yours, that I showed you that's similar to yours, if they sell and they're at 2.8, they will be your comp. And that's going to, so would it not be better if you were the first person to sell and became their comp? I think if we're if they're at 2.8 and you're at 2.9, and we obviously know your house is more lovely, but if you're at 3.4, I think that's going to be a little difficult for you to do. Now, what are the, you were telling me you were talking to agents, may I ask what yeah. company? Um, Francine with Sotheby's. Oh, so, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> I, get, I hear that a lot. I hear a lot about Sotheby's as international lately. Uh, two things I say about that is, one of the things is just because you put the word international into your name doesn't make you international. Now, I, I will admit they are an international firm. As a matter of fact, they've been an auction house since <coughs> 1744. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's a personal choice, I'm not sure that I would want an auction house to represent my property. <laughs> because does an auction house necessarily have the goal to get you the highest price, or do they have the goal to sell your property? As a matter of fact, I don't put this in a package, but I do have two little sheets that I bring with me in case they come up. Uh, one is this front page from uh, Sotheby's, and it says Sotheby's, oh, this is the Wikipedia one, Sotheby's is the operation divided into three segments, auction, finance, and dealer. Mm. Well, we know mm. they're not financing your home, yeah. and they're not a dealer, it's mm -hmm. not an art dealer, so I guess then your house would fall into the auction category. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, even on their site it says their products are fine books and art. Uh, the other issue is directly from the Sotheby's website, which I printed out, and it says Sotheby's is an innovative global art business serving the most discerning clients. Auctioneers since 1744. Today, Sotheby is offering so much more, is offering much more, offering clients extraordinary opportunities to direct private sales, galleries, worldwide selling exhibition, retail wine, diamonds, financing, art education, digital entertainment at any time and anywhere. We bring the world of art to a new world. No winner did I see real estate. Uh, so I would be a little bit concerned on having a company whose major focus is auction and art market my property versus somebody like Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. I mean, who are you going to trust a little more? An auction house or Warren Buffett? That's a serious yeah. decision. Yeah. Well, Do, if I'm looking for fine art, I would absolutely go on the Sotheby site. Mm -hmm. But if I'm looking for a house, I would probably go somewhere where I know where they're selling houses. Well, you got to You've got to address it, guys. Yeah. You mm -hmm. gotta address yeah. it. I don't put these in a package, but if they're mentioned, I just happen to pull them out. I have them with me. Mm -hmm. Well, Francine sells a lot of homes. Francine yep. does an excellent job of selling yep. her homes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked at her 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 list price to sale price average? I uh, know. Mm -hmm. If you look in, and I have a chart. Here's the list to sale price. As you can see, I get ninety eight percent. She's at ninety six and a half. Mm -hmm. It's only three and a half percent. But what's three and a half percent of three million dollars? Mm -hmm. Mm. That's about that's about one hundred thirty-five thousand. No, it's yeah. about ninety thousand plus another half. Uh, uh, it's about one hundred five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Now that one hundred five thousand dollars may not be important, but I bet I can reimburse you for that fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> True. You got to know your stats, guys. Um, yeah. You got to know your list price to sales price. You got to know your company's list price to sales price. You got to be able to say it, and you got to be able to talk about it because that's how you're going to overcome. Mm -hmm. And Francine does a great job. Mm -hmm. Here's, an, here's an, a different answer to that. You know, Francine does sell a lot of houses. But you know, what Francine truly has is Francine has probably the best list of buyers that I know of in the county. She has an awful lot of buyers. Mm -hmm. So I've got an idea. Why don't we figure out how we can get the best of both of those worlds? Okay. As I maybe I haven't mentioned, I typically charge between six and ten percent of my commissions. But what I'll do is, for the first thirty days, I will list your house, and I will notify Francine that we have it listed. And if Francine brings the buyer in the first thirty days, I will automatically reduce the commission to five percent. So you will hmm. now save that three and a half percent that you were going to lose that hundred five thousand. But now you'll save another one percent if Francine brings that buyer. 
So that way you get the mm -hmm. advantage of my marketing skills and my professionalism and my negotiating skills for you, and you'll have the opportunity to use Francine's buyers. Hmm. Will that work for you? Interesting. You going to call Francine? Absolutely. I'll call okay. Francine on the way. As soon as we sign a contract, I'll call Francine. On. <laughs> she'll be ex she'll be excited for the opportunity. I know she will. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that works well. It does. It works <laughs> very, very well. I turn a negative into a positive. She's got these buyers. Let's work her together. Let me do the marketing part because that's what you're really hiring me for, my marketing skills and negotiating skills because I get a higher price than she does, and let's hire her for her buyers. I've never had an agent ever bring the buyer. I've gotten hung up on a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a really good close. Let's see. So what else? We're all. Well, we're Greg, I want yeah. to ask you, too. Um, sure. Now that we're talking about commissions. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, what is it that you charge? I charge 6%. Well, we typically charge between 6 and 10 But based on the type of house that you have and the quality of the home, I think we can do it for 6% which gives me plenty of money to make sure that I market your property properly and to also make sure that your house gets the exposure to the market and yet there's still a profit in it for me. Because obviously I'm not a charity. Mm -hmm. I don't do this for free and I don't expect that you expect me to do it for free. Uh, anybody who doesn't want to pay any commission, I typically recognize them as what we call them for sale by owners. Uh, and I'd never be able to figure out how you can save two commissions in the same transaction. You save mine and, and the buyer saves at the same time. So. I've never really understood the for sale by owner concept. But 6% is what we charge. We have a 595 fee that we add onto that. Uh, mm. So. Well, the, the other agents we're talking to, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of money in this. You bet. And, uh, and we need every penny to go make that transition to where we're going. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you're the, you're the highest commission priced agent that we've talked to. We're thinking more like maybe between four and a half and five. So is there a particular part of my marketing you would like me to leave out? Because, you know. No, we want the, all want, the marketing. We want all of it, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, I always say, every, you know, one of the funny things is, is everybody knows what their products were. I mean, you mm -hmm. pay more for, for Baskin Robbins than you pay for Safeway ice cream. And the reason is the product's better, the quality's better. And it's been my experience that better marketing, quicker sale, brings a higher price than somebody who waits longer and offers you more. The other thing is, is that are you sure that you really want to place your trust and your negotiating skills or the negotiating skills you have with an agent who's not even able to negotiate their own commission that's willing to give it up immediately? Because I'm sure they didn't walk in here and offer you four and a half. <laughs> Did they? No. Yeah, exactly. So what happened is that you ground them a little bit and they cook. How quickly do you think they'll fold when it's your money instead of theirs? Mm. They'll That's be pressing point. you hard yeah. to take that money. Now, remember, I've already showed that you'll get $105,000 more probably because of the fact that I have the closer list price to sale price. Mm -hmm. So that's not necessary an offset. But I'll tell you what I will do. I'll remain flexible on my commission. We'll list it for six. And when the offer comes in, you and I will renegotiate at that point. I'm willing to do that. And here's what I do on this one. This is one of my favorites. You listed it at 2.9, and we sell it for 2.8. You've come down $100,000. So 100000 at 2.8 is what? 3% uh, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right around 3%. Mm -hmm. I'll reduce my commission by 3%. Does that sound fair? We take the same hit together. Hmm. Now, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I'm reducing my 3% of my 6%. <coughs> He's automatically thinking he'll reduce yeah. it 5%. <laughs> but I have never had a seller say that. I'll say, I'll share it. Okay. I understand. You came off. I'll come off the same amount off of mine. That will work for you. And now I've reduced it mm. 5 grand, yeah. 7 grand. Right. Good. Like that one. Yeah, huh? that is yeah. good. That's a good one. Yeah, we yeah. like that one. <laughs> so, and, and that comes up all the time. It's it, not necessary, but I do that. I use that when I'm I'm getting an argument over yeah. commission to list, so I get that in. And I also use that when I present the offer, and they're saying, mm. "Well, this isn't as much. We were expecting this. We were expecting that." Terrific. I understand that. I'll share the pain, and I'll share it equally with you. Well, one of the other things, Greg, is I really appreciate that guarantee, and we appreciate you know all the marketing and, yeah. and so forth. Um, 
so I'm just wondering, you know, can you just, why don't we just do this? Why don't we just do a, a 30 day contract? <laughs> I'll do better than that. I gave you a one day contract. I said you can cancel mm -hmm. any time. You can cancel yeah. this on the way while I'm on my way back to the office. Okay. What does the time frame matter? Doesn't matter if I put nine months in here. And when I show up, I already show up with the listing agreement filled out with the exception of price. And I mean, I have the commissions in there. I have the transaction fee in there. Uh, <clears throat> and I always show that up and I always charge 6%. I don't always Do you have get it for 6%. six months then? Do you, you I have put the nine dates? months. Nine months, okay. But, and I say, now we put this for nine months with a little asterisk. I said, but however, right here in the contract, as you can see, seller reserves the right to cancel this listing at no cost at any time. Okay. Period. So it doesn't yeah. matter what you okay. I mean, really, I mean, I'm, I'm offering you the best of all yeah. of them. I'm offering yeah. you a one day listing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if well, I that sounds pretty job, good. That sounds good. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Well. And very few people cancel. Very. If you stay in touch with mm -hmm. them, if you advertise, if you market, if you share what you're doing, if you share the feedback that you get from the clients with them, they won't cancel because yeah. they know you're putting forth the effort and they know you're trying. It's the guys who take the listing and never call them until five and a half months into the listing to ask for a renewal and are surprised that the seller doesn't want to give it to you. Yeah. So I think that's pretty important. Yeah. Well, we got any others? You got any well, family I, in the business? That's a usual question. Yeah. <laughs> as a matter of fact, Greg, I'm, I'm yeah, glad you did yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Uncle Ronnie uh, is just, has moved to town. He's been an agent for years and years and years, and we were talking to him about possibly listing our house with him. Cause Terrific. Where did he work, by the way? He worked in Houston. Oh, in Houston. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a good market. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty hot market. Uh, uh -huh. I think the average price there is probably about uh, two point, or I mean about uh, two hundred forty thousand. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be a little stretch for him. But yeah. <coughs> the question I would have for you, if you want to use any family member, yeah, if you're unhappy with me, you can fire me. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen if you're unhappy with Uncle Ron? Or Bob? Was it Bob or Ronnie? Ron? Uncle Ronnie. Okay, yes. If you're unhappy with <laughs> With Billy Bob, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are what are you going to do? Are you yeah. going to be able to fire him? Well, are you going to are you going to expect and demand that he does the same things that I'm prepared to do? He's going to be really upset if we don't talk to him. And I understand. Yeah. I understand. I think you should talk to him. Yeah. I think you owe him that. Yeah. And you can certainly share the things that I'm going to do with him because I'm going to leave this package with you. Mm -hmm. You can share that with him and ask him, are you prepared to do these things? Mm -hmm. And in the same circumstances, and by the way, the agent's prepared to cancel at any time, yeah. no cost. Mm -hmm. uh, the other concern I have is, do you really want him to have all the personal details and information mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he's going to, yeah, well, you're going to be buying mm -hmm. another property, are we really going to want to share what your net worth is and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff? It's different with me, I'm a guy, you're going to do this deal, we're going to do the next deal when you buy your new property, yeah. and then I'm going to send you a, a monthly card. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's a little uncomfortable sometimes sharing that stuff with personal, but yeah. it's your choice. If they continue to press, Billy Bob is going to give them such grief that they won't. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be willing to pay him a referral, even though he hasn't done anything. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, I pay a 2% referral, but I'll be willing, because he's related to you, I'll go up to a 5% referral for him. And I'm sure he'd be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> How many, sellers, <laughs> how many sellers do you think there are that really knows what referral fees we pay to each other? Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And I Good do point. typically pay 3% if I can find somebody who'll take it. I'll do five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and uh, Uncle, Uncle Ronnie will be thrilled. Mm -hmm. He'll get that money. You won't have to do a mm -hmm. thing. It's yeah. basically a gift yeah. to him. And I think that's, that's kind of fair. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. That, well, that's, that's, take care of that issue for that, you. I think that takes care of that issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we heard a lot, but I think what we want to do is probably just, we need to think about it. You know. Yeah. Are we, are we gonna pray about it? No. Maybe we'll pray about it. We Let's can pray, pray about now. it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've sat and prayed with men. We need to pray about this. Well, why do we need to do that overnight? God's awake every day. <laughs> He's here right now. Let's sit down and talk about it. And I always lead off, dear God, send me an agent who can sell my house. And I say, I'm here. <laughs> and, all laugh. and it sounds sacrilegious, but every time they laugh. And, and I do think, it, okay, 
Now, one of the other questions I, I always have is, is if I'm going on a listing appointment, I try to be one of two things. I try to be first or I try to be last. Mm. Because if I'm first and I'm good enough, I'm last. Okay, because mm -hmm. then we do the we do the Francine routine where she'll bring her buyers. I'll do that mm -hmm. one. I get started. And we'll get this going. Otherwise, I like to be last. And after we've gone through my listing presentation, say, no, did it, the other agent did they say anything that you felt that I'm missing in my presentation that they could do better for you than I can do? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you say yes, then yeah. I'll say, well, uh -huh. what is that? And if you say no, I'll say, then don't you think the choice is made? Yeah. I think we should start now. Mm -hmm. And are you guys? Sorry. Yeah. Are you guys ready to get started? It's a little cheap pen. That's all I use. Because <laughs> uh, if I leave it with them, I don't care. <laughs> I've had one of those uh, water house and, and mm -hmm. uh, those other ones with the gold on them. Yeah. Uh, but those things, Any anything else? Or do anybody yeah. in the audience yeah. have one? Yeah. Yes. Do you request to be last? Yeah. My uh, question is, is, do I request to be last? My secretary, typically, when she books the appointments for me, Caroline, she will say, She'll say, are you in interviewing any other agents? And if they say no, then fine. If they say yes, she said, well, what time are you starting the interviews? And if they say, well, we've got our first one at 10 o'clock, she'll either say, well, how about I have Greg come over at 9, or how many are you interviewing? Why don't we have Greg come last? Because he's got a couple of offers to present in the morning. Mm -hmm. When I'm never available, <clears throat> I'm always presenting offers. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's true. The appointment ran over. Greg's been working with some buyers uh, or with some sellers, and the appointment ran over a little bit. He'll be there in a half hour because he doesn't want to rush the offer any more than you'll want him to rush that offer presentation for you. Would that be okay with you? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm never, you know, they don't need to know if I'm at a ball game or if I'm at lunch or wherever I am. I'm out <laughs> presenting offers. Or, or, you know, I think that's very important because, first off, it makes them think you're successful. It makes them think that you have opportunity. I do... I really like to be first because, you know, I'm, I'm such an airhead. I love to get in there and ego and see if I can take it before anybody else gets it. Don't always happen. But if not, then I like to be last. In the middle, you're kind of sandwiched in between. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've got the first person, you probably beat them. You don't know what the, second, the other person meant. I also ask, mm -hmm. if, may I ask you who you're interviewing? Because if I know who they're interviewing, then that little sheet with the 100 agents will come out and it'll be highlighted. See, I just thought I'd share with you. Good. These are what yeah. our agents mm -hmm. are doing. Or I, I'll print the MLS. I don't know if your MLS does it. Our MLS has agent production. Yes. If I know mm -hmm. who the agent is, I'll print the agent production. And, I, and if I have to go back long enough to I've been in business 10 years longer than they have, I'm, got, I'm bound to beat them. You know, there's not many agents that can say they sold 5,300 homes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll print a sheet, you know. I'll bring a ream of paper. Here's the sales I've made. Mm -hmm. So okay. I think it's important if you do do that, if you know the person's going to be, bring the competition, bring what they have. If you've only done two deals, bring what your office has, has had compared to that agent. Because I see, you know, Francine's done, she did, as you saw in my little sheet, she did 33 deals last year. Berkshire Hathaway, the office did 218. Mm, okay. And I think it's better yeah. to have, now you got... That much more power behind you than you do with Francie. Mm -hmm. No, I, yeah. yes, ma'am. If you have to leave without the agreement signed, can you talk about your follow up to? Okay, if I have to leave without the agreement signed, what's my follow up? Usually before I leave, I try to set a time. So you guys are going to think about this tonight. I understand you've got to talk to your financial advisor. That's a good one. Because, I mean, it's hard to overcome talking to my financial advisor because I'm not allowed to give financial advice. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I can do is. is I think we've reached the agreement that I'm probably the agent for you. Why don't we go ahead and sign this offer and you take the copy of it and talk to your financial advisor. And if he approves it, then we can go ahead. Because obviously your financial advisor, and again, you have the guarantee to get out at any time. So at least I've done that. All right. So if they're going to go talk to the financial advisor, I ask him for the listing in advance to save us the time on the paperwork. Okay, so we can mm -hmm. get your home on the market. Mm -hmm. I want to take advantage of this beautiful weather. I mean, we got the Santa Ana coming in. Skies are going to be clear. I want to get those photographs now. Mm -hmm. So, and the minute you sign this, I can order the photographs. Uh, but if I don't get the listing, I usually set up a time, well, why don't I give you a call tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and we can discuss it again at that time. And usually I'll, I'll follow up almost the, the next morning on the dot I'll put it in my calendar and I'll call them at 10 o'clock and I say you know I, I'm really thrilled about the opportunity we had last night 
I hope things work. I don't get them all, but you, the follow-up is that you got to call them and you got to make it quick. You don't want other people to, to get in. You don't want the agent, you don't want Francine to say, well, Greg's even got more buyers than I do. <laughs> so <laughs> so you, you, ha you have to try to get in. Uh, I, send a, I always send a card. I would send a handwritten card. Thank you for the opportunity. And I have my, my courier drop it off at their house the next morning. So there's a little hand. Handwritten notes are non-existent. <clears throat> but a little handwritten note from me saying thank you for the opportunity. I really enjoyed meeting you. Loved your kids. And that darling little dog you have. Uh, you know, he's just so cute. <sighs> my hands still smell from petting him. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that note works a lot. A lot of people say, oh, I, yeah. you know, I have that dropped off at 9 o'clock and when I call 10, she says, oh, I just got your note. Oh, you, well, you we put got it that. in the mailbox? You put it in the... Uh, I, I have a ring a doorbell and say, Greg, okay. I have to drop it off. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Can't put them in the mailbox. Right. It's illegal. illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're in a condominium, you can't get to the mailbox anyway. So I'll have my courier just drop it off and she'll drop it off and just say thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, the last, I mean, this stuff works, guys. <laughs> the last 45 days, I took 32 listings. So far this month, I've good. done 16 listings and 16 sales. Uh, so, it, you know, it's a good month. Uh, I've got 34 <laughs> active listings right now. I have very few people that are complaining. Yes, ma'am. Um, the stats are your testimonials. Do you include personal testimonials? I do, have personal, I do have personal testimonials. Usually my mailers have a testimonial in them uh, that I put on. I don't know if this one does. or No, this one did not. This one had a sales <laughs> thing, I think. Uh, Oh, what our clients say. I put a, a bottom ever have a client say. Uh, I just want to take a minute. Thank you for your. Oh, this was this was an interesting one. Francine uh, listed herself as the top selling agent in January, and hers is the top selling company. Well, Berkshire Hathaway is after that to make them <laughs> retract it because it's not true. But one of my clients wrote back said, just wanted to take a minute to say thank you for your updated brochures. Really appreciate last month's back cover with trust is everything. Needless to say, we have trusted your, profession, your professionalism on multiple occasions. We will continue to recommend the Newman & Newman team because of that trust. Continued successes and much happiness in all that you do, Michael and Pat Lesnick, previous buyers and sellers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, get, I get emails from agents that will say, boy, that was a really great transaction. Thanks. We've been looking forward to doing one with your team. I will run that in there, what our competition says. And when you get a quote in there from another agent saying how good it was to work with you, and I don't know, I send out a questionnaire on every single transaction we close. <clears throat> we do it both mail and electronically. I want those kudos. I collect those kudos. I, you should go on, to, on my website, and my, one of my buyer's agents, Art Lewis, has a tag on his email that says, uh, uh, read what others say about me at the bottom, and you click on it, and it's a link to his kudo page. And there's probably 40 great kudos on there. Art was terrific. Art is responsive. Art always called me back. I mean, all you need to do is put that on your, on your list as a click. And you can put that on your email signature, and it'll take you right there. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and you got to, I mean, even if your mother writes it for you, you know, <laughs> or mother-in-law, so the name will be different. But put, you need kudos. Your manager can write one. She's a great agent. She's done a terrific job. You need kudos, you need a team, you need people saying things. Third party reinforcement's very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, you live on referrals, I believe you told me. Yes. Of course, mm -hmm. now I always say if you live on referrals, every time somebody buy, dies or moves out of town, you're losing a buyer. <laughs> so I think you need to have a farm too. I think you need to build your business. Mm -hmm. But, and if I, if I were to start all over again, I wasted a lot of time being a buyer's agent. I would much rather work listings because listings control the market. A listing works 24 hours a day. The only time I can sell a buyer is when you're sitting next to me in the seat. And that listing, while I'm home in bed, that you guys are pulling up my listings. And you're looking at them. People are looking on the internet online for that. So there's a lot of information that you have available and a lot of things you can do. The company provides a lot of good materials. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. I've had 33 years to develop most of this stuff. Uh, you're certainly, as I said earlier, you're welcome to plagiarize every bit of it. doesn't matter to me. Uh, by the time you figure this out and copy it, I'll be doing something new uh, <laughs> and move on. Yes, sir. Um, as a new agent, um, I'm just about to take a listing this summer. And just what's your advice for like a brand new agent who knows you're going to get a listing that's a multi-million dollar listing? How long you been in the market? Uh, about a, a little over a year. That's not the answer. In this market, it seems like forever. Yes. 
Okay, that's the first thing you want to do when somebody says, how long have you been in the market? Say, God, in this market, it seems like forever. You know, that you just dodged it, didn't answer the question. Uh, be prepared. I, I mean, if you know you've got to this summer, you've now got the end of April and all of May and part of June to get your package ready to be prepared to go in and wow. You can, you can even do, I mean, I would drive by the house. I'd probably have some photographs taken of the exterior of the house so that you can already prepare a little material that you're going to have that you can go in. Uh, you can take one of these brochures that they already print and say, well, this is something like I'm thinking about doing for you, and there's a picture of their house on the front. Uh, doesn't cost much. Kinko's will do these for, for almost nothing. Uh, I, like I said, I do 10,000 of these. It's, I spend $14,000 a month just on mailings every month. But you do the math, you know, I did $2.8 million in gross commission income last year. I spent $400,000 on marketing. So, I mean, there's a big spread in there. There's a, there's a huge gap. Uh, it's, I, I typically think a new agent should probably spend about 10% of their income that comes in on marketing. You have to market yourself. I think as you get longer and older and older into it and you've been in there more, you can get about 8%. And typically that's what I try to do is spend about 8%. Sometimes I spend more. Uh, but I think it's a terrific investment. If you have to invest in yourself, you're in a business. And we're about ready to wrap this up. Uh, so it's, and I'll get your question. It's, who do you work for? Warren Buffett. Who do you work for? Warren Buffett. Who do you work for? Berkshire Hathaway. Who do you work for? Berkshire Hathaway. I work for myself. Oh. <laughs> You're a businessman or a businesswoman. You need to remember that you've got to work for yourself. You've got to invest in yourself. You have to invest in your education. You have to invest in your marketing. You have to invest yourself. Your license happens to be hung with Berkshire Hathaway. You happen to be working with that company at this time. But you need to remember that you're independent contractors. The gentleman with the blue tie first. Two, there's a young lady had her hand up. Okay, two, two more. So, so piggybacking on all of that, for all of the new agents here, or for the, those people who are restarting their careers or need to, to get ahead a little bit, what would be your one piece of advice to those people? Well, if I'm a brand new agent, you don't have any listings. You only have one thing to work with, and that's buyers. I mean, that's, that's it. Uh, I, when I started in the business, uh, I tended bar. Uh, for the first two years, I attended bar every day, and I went to work during the day, and at 5 o'clock, I never had any listing appointments because I said, I can't meet you tonight because I have another listing appointment, but I'll be open on Saturday morning. Will that work for you? Uh, because I had to go attend bar because I had grown accustomed to having food with my meals. <laughs> so, what happened is, is that I would go, and I would go, and I would hold open houses, and I held open houses probably four days a week. Mm. I would hold them in, in the summertime. It's a great time. You can hold them in the early evening. Agents that have lots of listings like me are always thrilled to have somebody hold a house open because of the fact. I mean, now, I make sure that you show up on time and you don't close early and you do all the things you say you're going to do. But that's what I'm doing. If I'm a buyer, I would work that. I would pick a farm. I wouldn't pick a farm that's dominated by somebody else. I would pick a farm that has nobody that's dominating it at all. And there's lots of those. There's, there's areas where there's you know, 40 agents that all had the last sales. I would go into that farm and I would start marketing and I would start. And when I do my open house, it's a pain in the butt, but I'd set up 25 open house signs and I set them up all over. And then when I sell a property that's listed with somebody else, I have a sign that says, another sold by Newman and Newman. And I used to have these made, I, actually I got this idea from uh, uh, Gallagher. Uh, Michael Gallagher, he had blue and white ones that said another sold by Gallagher and Gallagher, he put them in the line, in the lawn. I said, well, I want them to be brighter than that, so I bought red and white ones. And I, and I introduced that to a Howard Britton seminar, went back the following year, guy said, I liked your idea, and I took the red and white ones and I had them painted in reflective paint. So when people <laughs> drive into the subway at night, they see another reflected. And when I close a house and the buyer represents the house, I ask the buyer, I give him a $50 gift certificate to a restaurant, I ask him if I can put a sign in their yard that says, another sold by Newman & Newman, we have others just for you. And people say to me, I knew that Maxine didn't sell that house, it was Newman that sold it. <laughs> and I pay, if they leave that on the lawn for 30 days, and I put brochures with other listings on it. Hmm. Okay, yes ma'am, you're it. Uh, who does your website? Who does my website? One Park Place does my website. I don't always recommend them because they're good, but they're, they get 
caught up in other things. I get better attention than most do because of the fact that I'm a huge part of their business, or was, and I'm on the board of directors. But, <laughs> well, they needed money at one time and I invested. But I think there's a lot of good website developers out there. And I would just find one that, that you're comfortable with. Uh, like I said, mine are, and, and mine are inexpensive. I mean, for, for the 100 websites, it cost me $6,000 a month is what I pay to maintain them and run them all. And mine are easy because they're all the same. So on the, on the, what's the thing people want most? They want prices, photos, and floor plans. If I did a website for, for a particular neighborhood, I would have every one of the house models in there. I would have copies of every one of the floor plans on there that are in that, in that subdivision. Obviously, you can't do that if you work one of these little mixed bag communities. Uh, but that's what they want. And so all of my websites have that. The other thing is they're all downtown, so I can have the same hundred neighborhood things, the restaurants and stuff, they're all the same because they're all in the same area. So, uh, yes, ma'am. Whoops, I'm sorry. Last yeah. one. What do you do to keep in touch with your past clients? Well, that's probably the single biggest weakness I had in my life. Did you repeat if, the question? Oh, the question was, what do you do to stay in contact with your past clients? That's probably had been my weakest. I'm, you know, I'm one of those guys that was sold and I'm on to the next one. I probably have 3,000 uh, orphans in the business, uh, which are just clients that sold and I didn't stay in touch with them. Now I mail them every month. I send them a little, just a little stay in touch. I do email and then I do a mailing on a quarterly basis. That's all we do. Uh, I don't send them you know, gift baskets. I don't give them anything when they close. Uh, I never felt it does any sense. Gifts, gifts to me are kind of a dumb thing to do. If you give them something to eat, they eat it, and then, you know, they don't remember you after it's gone. Uh, I used to do door knockers because at least that stayed on the door and held their name on it. But I have found that, you know, giving them a, a fancy gift really doesn't mean they're going to remember you. Uh, I did have a guy that used to take a picture of their old, had a professional picture taken of their old house, had it framed and signed, and he gave that to them so they could take that with them so they'd always remember their, you know, their past. That, that's not a bad idea. Uh, I had another friend used to give out snow globes. Uh, but, you know, I just, <laughs> Alan Dom, he had a little snow globe that you shake it up and it was Philadelphia in the streets and all that. But I, I, haven't, I haven't found any, any real success that anybody's ever called me up and said, boy, I, I'm listening with you because you gave me that basket of fruit. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, before, all right. before we give Greg Newman and uh, Eddie Callaway and Bill Hobbs for participating in a big round of applause, before we do, I want you to think about something Greg, in a heartbeat, said, I'd be happy to come up and just share with the group. And uh, it's probably the thing that inspires me the most about our culture as a company, that we're participating and working together. So the way we can participate with Greg in San Diego is that when you have a client that's <laughs> in that direction, I don't think they could be in better hands than the Newman and Newman. So uh, think about that, and let's just thank Greg Thank you, Thanks, Greg. Thank you. 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 Thank you.